Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the first of three webinars in our winter webinar series. This one is Inspiring Intros, New Plants at Midwest in 2023. We're excited to share with you the 30 plus new plants we've added to our plant lineup this year and the reasons why they were chosen. My name is Jamie Heflin and I will be your host for today's meeting. Uh, before we get started, I want to go through a few housekeeping items. Um, this is a webinar, so your camera and microphone has been disabled. If you have a question at any point during the presentation, please type it into the Q&A box. We will be answering questions um, live throughout the webinar as well when we can. We will be sending out a couple of polls during the webinar, which are anonymous. And a follow-up email will be sent out at the end of the presentation. This will have a link to um, that required test if you're looking to earn any CEU credits. Um, also, this is being recorded and it'll be available on our YouTube channel within the next couple of weeks. Now, let's introduce our speakers. Our presenters for today's webinar are Sales and Operations Manager Nikki Moline and Product Manager Shannon McInerney. Nikki and Shannon have shared their passion um, for plants in a number of webinars for us over the past couple of years. So if you haven't had your fill of plants after today's presentation, be sure to check out our YouTube channel where you can find recordings from all of those previous webinars. So Nikki has been with us going on 15 years and she truly embodies the Midwest fundamental of being a lifelong learner. As sales and operations manager, Nikki leads the sales, shipping and order fulfillment teams here at Midwest. Shannon is going into her ninth year at Midwest Ground Covers and is continually demonstrating her passion for quality and everything that she touches. As product manager, Shannon oversees purchasing, product line development, and the plant accession and trial process. She also coordinates work in the Midwest Display Gardens. And with that, I believe Shannon will be getting us started with our first slide on Ground Covers. Yes, thank you, Jamie. Um, so yes, as Jamie mentioned, we have quite a few new introductions today, so we're going to get right to it. So we have one new ground cover for 2023, and that is Pachysandra Green Sheen, as you can see in that picture. Um, so Green Sheen, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with our standard uh, Pachysandra Green Carpet. So Green Sheen is Similar in a lot of ways uh, in terms of disease resistance, they're about the same, but you can see that green sheen has that nice shiny, uh, like really shiny green leaf. And it's also just a little bit taller than, um, than green carpet. So we will be carrying this one in a pint size as part of our Hocus, Hocus Ground Covers or um, program and uh, slowly be phasing green carpet out of that paint pint size. So not immediately, but in the future, you might see that one no longer available. So one time, one question I had for our production manager, our nursery manager, when we were deciding to make this change is like, is this going to be a problem? Are we going to get the two mixed up? Like, or, or, you know, do we have a potential mess on our hands here? And he's like, no, we've had a stock bed for of this one for a long time. We carried this one, I guess, many years ago. And he's like, they are so different. You will never confuse the two. There really is that shininess of the leaf. You just can't, you can't mix it up. So I would say this one would be great if, um, you know, it's not a huge sweep of Pachysandra in the back 40 somewhere, but more um, up by a front door or something where you really, it's more of a focal point and you want some impact, this would be a great plant to use. Um, and we are expecting this one to be available in May of this year. All right, with that, we're gonna move on to natives and I'll kick us off with the uh, first native plant. As you guys can see, we're gonna go category by category here. Uh, so I'm really excited about this one, um, Allium trichocum, which is also known as wild leek or ramps. Um, if you're not familiar with this plant, it is super popular at like high-end restaurants and used for um, culinary, uh, you know, cooking and things like that. Um, this is going to be added as part of our natural garden natives line in a pint. And if you guys aren't familiar with what a natural garden native is, um, it is a native plant that is a local ecotype 
to um, here in Illinois, 90 miles from uh, Kane County or St. Charles, Illinois. So they are very local to the Chicagoland area and uh, this Gallium trachocum is uh, locally sourced here. So really nice plant emerges with that kind of green, um, thicker leaf. It doesn't really look like it's from the um, onion family. So might kind of surprise you there, at least foliage wise, but both the foliage and the bulb itself are edible. So if you do um, grow it in your own yard, uh, you can eat both of those things. Um, once the summer kind of heat sets in, the foliage will actually go away and then it'll send up that really nice kind of stalk of flowers and it gets a bright white flower that looks more like an allium, easier to identify there. Um, and then as <clears throat> the flower goes away, it gets this like kind of black pearly um, seed head, which is really cool. So a couple things on this plant, <clears throat> if you guys are looking to try it, um, it does like extremely high organic matter. It really is a forest bottom plant. Um, so it likes kind of the sun in the early spring, but it likes full kind of dense shade once we get into the summer months. It is an ephemeral, so don't expect it to be around all year. We'll have a nice, you know, spring show with the foliage, summer flowering, and then it will go completely dormant. Uh, it does need some consistent moisture. It will not survive in heavy clay if you have a situation like that. Um, and it is a kind of long to establish plant. So um, to get a kind of full size plant, it takes about five to seven years from uh, seed germination. So that's also why we've been trying to grow this one for a really long time. We finally have got the production cycle down, um, but really special plant. So Allium trachocum, um, and we should have this one in May as well. All right, so our next uh, natural garden native is Carex jamesii. So some of you who have been customers for a while, especially native enthusiasts, may recognize that we carried this one several years ago. Um, we took it out of production just because we were having trouble keeping up with production. We hadn't quite cracked the germination code yet. Um, but we feel like we finally got kind of kind of have that all figured out and consistent can consistently supply this one. Um, so this is a Carex that is uh, prefers part to full shade. Um, if you've listened to some of our Carex talks, you know that we've, we kind of, you know, we'll test the shade to sun spectrum on some of these, but this is definitely a part to full shade Carex. It is not going to like being in full sun. That being said, it can tolerate some dampness, but it, it, generally does well in drier conditions. So, you know, we got we have a lot of questions. We have our dry shade garden here in St. Charles. This is one that would definitely do well in a dry shade site, which I know is a challenge for a lot of people. So um, as Nikki mentioned about the allium, this is one that's going to take a little bit longer to establish to, you know, it likes to kind of get situated before it really roots down. Um, it does spread rhizomatously um, it can seed, but it's not a prolific, prolific seeder. So that's not primarily how it's going to spread for you. Um, so just kind of a nice, um, you know, the nice fine textured bright green foliage. And then it has that really cool kind of three clustered spikelet is, is the best way to identify this one. Um, so we are expecting to have this one, Carex James Yai, available in April. All right, next one is Dicentra cucularia. Uh, I'm also very, very excited about this one. Another one we've been working on for a really long time. Uh, common name on this one is, is Dutchman's Breaches. And if you're wondering why, hopefully you guys can see from the picture, it looks like upside down pants. So very cute little plants. One of my favorite spring ephemerals to kind of pop up um, in the woodland setting. Um, so this one, again, very similar to Allium trachocum. It likes very dense kind of woodland setting, likes a lot of sun in the spring, but then likes kind of a dense shade um, situation as we get into the heat. It is a spring ephemeral. So this one is one of the earlier ones that you usually see blooming. So you'll see this one kind of like mid-April through, you know, maybe early May, but then this one is definitely gonna kind of go to sleep for the summer as the heat kind of sets in. 
Really beautiful foliage on this one, almost looks like a fern, uh, blue-green foliage, uh, very kind of deeply incised. Teeny little plants, only gets about eight to 12 inches tall and wide. Does like to naturalize, so if you guys do plant it, um, expect that it'll kind of colonize, you know, wherever you plant it, if it has ideal conditions. Um, a little note on this one, it does like well-drained soils. If you plant it somewhere where it tends to get standing water in the winter, it won't like that. It probably won't survive. So just make sure that it's in a well-drained um, area. And it is also a very important pollinator plant for emerging bumblebees. So uh, really cool plants. This one will be available in pints come here in April. All right, our next native is part of the American Beauties program, and this is Monarda punctata bebop. So um, some of you may know we carry the straight species in pints and plugs, um, but this one is part of American Beauties. It will be, we'll carry it in a gallon. So if you're looking for a slightly larger size and um, Monarda punctata, both this and the straight species, just, I mean, I love the flower on these. It's one of my favorites. It's so cool. Uh, in places we have it in the landscape, people are like from 20 yards away, like what is that plant? So it looks like a little stack of pineapples to me. I just love it. Um, and so as compared to the straight species, that is a little bit more white um, with kind of some tinges of pink. This is going to have a little deeper pink coloring on it. Um, so if you're looking for something, you know, with a little more coloration to it, this would be a good one. And then this is also going to be a little more compact than the straight species. So um, again, if you're looking for something in more of a designed garden that maybe might be a little bit more well-behaved, this would be a good option. Um, so like other Monarda, it, it likes drier soils, it prefers um, good airflow, so make sure to give it some space to plant it in full sun. Um, and then the other thing about this is being in the mint family, the, you know, we, we, we always get a lot of questions about deer and rabbits and things like that, and this one, it won't really be bothered by those two because of that, that um, minty minty flavoring. So um, we are expecting this one to be available in March of, or sorry, excuse me, May of 2023. All right, next plant is another uh, native in the American Beauties native plants line, Phlox Jenna. Um, we trialed this one a couple years ago and finally decided to add it into our program. Uh, this one actually was rated one of the best Phlox paniculatas by a recent Mount Cuba um, trial with a bunch of different Phlox paniculata. So uh, just based on kind of their findings, we thought that it would be a good one to add. And the reason why it was one of the top rated was because it was the best with, um, you know, mildew resistance, and then also the best for pollinators. So they said, you know, they were tracking the amount of butterflies, bees, and such that were um, kind of going to all the different Fox paniculata, and this one was absolutely loaded with butterflies. So if you guys have butterfly garden, might want to give this one a try. Um, the difference with this one versus other Phlox paniculatas are the flowers are actually really small. So, and you can kind of see that from the picture, especially the one kind of for scale with the, the butterfly. So very small flowers if you're used to other garden Phlox. But this one does have an extremely long bloom time from about July to September and will continue to bloom with a little bit of um, deadheading. So if you want to keep that flower blooming going, just kind of a light deadheading will help with that. Um, this one is not really drought tolerant though, so if we do um, get faced with kind of hotter, drier periods, it might need a little bit of supplemental watering. And this one is not deer tolerant, so deer do like to munch on it, but you know, if you have a lot of things in the garden, it may not be the first thing it goes after. Um, and then finally, big, big uh, kind of fun thing about this plant is it smells amazing. So the scent is uh, pretty strong. And you know, when we're driving through the nursery, something that will hit us, uh, you know, with its fragrance. So um, this one should be available here in the uh, spring in May, 2023. And Nikki, we did get a comment um, on people seeing it a little bit 
larger in their yard, closer to four feet. I think that's probably true. I saw some this yeah. summer. Um, so we probably need to update that. Yes, that. I would agree. I did see that last night when I was reading the Mount Cuba report. So yeah, it is a bit of mm -hmm. a larger flux. So yeah. thank you. Good comment. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have a poll for which of our natives that you are most excited about. And as in the past, you could only pick one, but now we've made it so you can pick more than one. So tell us all of them that you are excited about. All right. Ooh, so nice. Nice. Yes. I. Th I mean, I think they're all exciting, but yes, the the couple of American Beauties in particular, I think those are going to be great, great landscape plants. Yes, I would agree. All right. Well, we will move on to perennials now. So our first perennial is uh, anemone fall in love sweetly. So this is part of the proven winners program. It's their first anemone. And um, you can see if you're familiar with Pamina, it is um, a somewhat similar flower, kind of that bright pink double flower. Um, but this is going to be a little bit more compact than that. So, you know, about 20 inches or so tall and um, just a lot more floriferous than Pamina too. You can see just from that picture, they're loaded with flowers. Um, so as with most anemone, you know, this is going to be a fall bloomer kind of late August into September, um, maybe even will stretch into October a bit. Um, and then same with anemone as well. This is going to spread by rhizomes, but it, as I think everybody knows, some of the anemone can get a little aggressive. This one won't be, you know, something that's unmanageable. It'll spread slowly in size, but it's not something that's going to take off on you if you're not watching it. So um, we are excited for this one. Again, I'll, we'll kind of mention as we go through, but with a lot of these new introductions, if we feel that it's an improvement over a plant that we do carry now, we'll be slowly phasing out the old. So um, Pamina is one that will kind of be phasing out along the way here as well in place of this one. So um, Anemone Fall in Love Sweet Wheelie, really, we're expecting to be available this May. Next one is a proven winner introduction. So a still be dark side of the moon. Um, you guys may be familiar with Chocolate Shogun. We carried that one for a while. Uh, this we definitely felt like was a better variety. Uh, for one, its foliage color is a big improvement. So Chocolate Shogun was nice, but um, Dark Side of the Moon definitely has a much richer purple foliage, like more true kind of purple foliage. Uh, the other thing is flower production on this plant. So it definitely gets way um, heavier flower set than we saw on Chocolate Shogun. So a way better improvement and, um, you know, just a better plant. So this one, another kind of cool thing about it is in a, it is in a stilby that can grow in full sun. Now, with that being said, I will tell you it does need a lot of water. Um, even in shade, it still be tend to be kind of water hogs, but this is still be in full sun is going to need a lot of a lot of water. So I did plant this one personally. I did not water it. It did um, kind of dry up, and I thought it was dead. And later in the summer, when it got more water, it actually came back to life. So it does really well if you give it. Um, the water it needs. We saw some really amazing plants up at Walter's Garden up in Michigan. I did ask them, they do consistently irrigate though. So that's kind of what you need to do with this plant. But it does get pretty robust if you take care of it. Uh, 24 inches tall to 24 to 36 inches wide. Uh, we'll flower a little bit later in the summer. It is a chinensis um, variety of a stilby. So it gets that little bit of a later flowering time. Um, and it will tolerate some shade, but what you guys will see if you have it in a shadier location is just less flower production. So that's a still be dark side of the moon and it will be available in uh, May. All right, next up we have Carex Feather Falls. Um, we are excited about this one. You, I know this one has been on the market a few years, so you may have heard of it already. 
um, but it seems to be gaining popularity out there. Um, so you can see just a really nice um, kind of texture to it. It's the kind of the same color variation as either Ice Dance or Silver Scepter, but you know, Ice Dance is a little bit more upright habit, and this is probably also a slightly thinner leaf. Um, so this just has that really nice, like narrow foliage, kind of weepy. Um, it will get pretty wide if you allow it, which is kind of cool. So a great kind of just spreading uh, ground cover. This picture here is actually from the Chicago Botanic Garden in the new shade evaluation garden. So if you'd like to see a big mass of it planted, you can you can check it out there. Um, uh, this one also is uh, very vigorous, so it will have some good sun tolerance for you as well, or better sun tolerance than maybe some of the other carics will. Um, so this one is available now. We've had it since last fall, so you can check it out when you're ready. All right, next one is uh, another addition to the Echinacea Sombrero series. So this one is Sangrita. Uh, so this one's going to get some orange to red flowers that mature to more of a warm red, um, and it consistently kind of has that darker cone. Very much like the other um, sombreros, if you've tried them, really nice compact plants that are heavy, heavy flower, flower producers. Um, that is really the nice thing about the Echinacea sombrero is just how sturdy the plant is, the branching, and then its flower power. Uh, the other nice thing about these plants are they are drought tolerant and salt tolerant. They don't like to be planted in moist soils. Um, they like the dry kind of conditions. So a plant that you can definitely kind of get established and you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, another difference if you're comparing it to some of the other uh, Echinacea sombrero series, the foliage on this one is a little bit darker, um, darker green than um, salsa red. And you guys can lightly uh, dehead this one, deadhead this one if you want more flower production. Now the one thing that um, I think Shannon particularly noticed in the um, in our gardens here, we do see some reversion or at least seeding with the echinacea sombreros that they will produce seed and you will get purple cone flowers just probably you know more of the straight species pop up. So if you do see some of those purple cone flowers and are planted with your sombreros and you didn't do that, it's probably the plants receiving. So uh, we should have this one in uh, May of 2023. All right, next we have Ethereum Crusted Surf. Um, so again, everyone's probably familiar with Ethereum Pictum. This is gonna be a similar color scheme to that one. Um, I like that plant, it's a great plant, but it seems to really need to be in the right site to be happy. Sometimes the plants can be less than vigorous. Um, so this is where this one is an improvement on that. It is just, you can see from that top picture, a really nice bulky plant. It is a little bit taller and wider than Pictum will be. So um, maybe more of a middle border plant as opposed to an edging plant like Pictum's often used. Um, but a great uh, variety for shade. It's gonna have its best coloration in, in partial shade. Um, and uh, one interesting thing about this one too, it's hard to see from any of the pictures we have there, but a, a really fine detail is on the tips of the ferns, it's kind of, instead of a single point, kind of a double crest. Um, so just, again, a little kind of interesting thing to, thing to point out about it. Um, so this one is available now, and this one is also um, from the Proven Winners program. All right, another uh, Proven Winner plant here. Um, I will tell you guys, if you've never been to Walter's Garden, if you're ever up in Michigan, please go. That's why we end up um, assessing these plants and adding them to our product line because they're just really incredible and their, their trial gardens are amazing and anybody from the green industry can walk, walk them. So um, <laughs> geranium boom chocolate, it was one they told us about and showed us pictures and we were like, eh, like another purple geranium and our experience has not been great in trialing those. This plant is incredible. Um, it's just so robust 
so huge, um, very vigorous, very floriferous. If you guys tried Dark Rider like I did, and it was like, didn't really do much, it didn't really grow much, this plant will absolutely blow you away. Um, the picture is true, this one behind me. I took that picture up at Walter, so it really does get that flower set. Um, the flowers are very upright above the foliage. And again, the foliage is like that true kind of purpley green, very rich, not like brown at all, just a really standout plant. So if you guys are looking for something, um, you know, for part shade to full sun that has that nice purple foliage, would definitely check out uh, Geranium Boom Chocolata. And we do have this one actually available now. All right, so the next we have uh, the first of two hellebores we're gonna talk about. Um, these are both part of the Frost Kiss series. So last year uh, we introduced a white variety from this series. Um, so this is Dorothy's Dawn. So kind of a nice light pink color. Um, the, the great thing about these hellebores is they are a hybrid of several of the popular types on the market. So they've um, helped in bring in the foliage from, I, I forget exactly what the what species that was, but some of the marbled foliage there, they have those. So when the flowers are not in bloom, you still have the nice foliage to look at. They've helped to take some of the deeper flower color from some of the orientalis types and um, also just have generally kind of bumped up the blooming a little bit. So um, this one of this Frost Kiss series is actually the latest to bloom, but still we're talking, you know, like late February into March through April. So long bloom time on these. Um, from a grower perspective, you know, not, not so much for the landscaper, but hellebores can take a long time um, to flower the second year. So these are great because they flower after the first year. So they should do better for you guys in the garden immediately. We had, we grew some of these as a trial and gave them to employees after, you know, growing them on. And I feel like everyone had really nice success with these. Um, the hardiness on these is also really nice. Um, so these also have good heat tolerance to them. Um, you know, they won't melt out as you get later in the season or anything like that. So just a really nice series of plants we're excited about. And Dorothy's Dawn is available now. All right, and Pippa's Purple is from the uh, same, same line. So again, everything that Shannon just said applies to this plant, um, but you'll see it just has that much richer kind of purple, darker purple color. Uh, I'll kind of speak to the foliage on this plant just a little bit more. Uh, really interesting with its kind of mottled kind of white venation. And the leaves on this plant are actually huge. Um, it's very vigorous. Uh, I will say I did plant one of these in probably maybe a little bit of a sunnier location than I should have. And in the summer months, the foliage did start to look a little bit crispy, but I just watered it a little bit more and it did just fine. So um, it does like, I would say it would do better in a more shadier location. Um, and that's just kind of from my personal experience. Um, the other thing with hellebores in general is just try and keep the roots cool in the summer as well, but really, really great, vigorous, kind of big, beefy hellebore, um, one of the best that we've seen in trials. And this one's also available now. All right, next we have Heucra Dolce Apple Twist. Um, so, Again, we carry quite a few Hugra from the Dolce series from Proven Winners. This one will actually be replacing Apple Teeny for us. Um, we were having some availability and production issues with that. Uh, so this is I, depending, I guess, depending on what you're looking for. But while Apple Teeny was just kind of the straight, bright yellow chartreuse foliage, um, this, when it comes out in spring, has a little bit more of that red veining to it. So you see a nice color change through the season. Um, and it also has that rippled edge to it, which again, adds some nice interest to the plant. Um, here, we are constantly striving to find a heucra, a chartreuse heucra that does not burn in the sun. 
we're not quite there yet. I, I wouldn't say this one really burns, but it definitely will bleach out where they, you're gonna, not going to have as nice of chartreuse of color. It's going to kind of turn a little bit more whitish. So we're still on a mission to find that and we will keep looking, but um, definitely part shade to shade for this one. Um, we'll have cream colored flowers to it. I don't think these are any, you know, a lot of the newer cucaras have kind of more showy flowers. I don't think these are anything that spectacular, unfortunately, but um, again, it's got that nice color change to it in spring. So these are also available now. All right, a new lavender. Lavender have been super hot on the market the last couple of years, uh, so we decided to add another one. So Sensational was one that we had had in our um, trial gardens for a while. We saw it over winter. We did not see it melt out in the summer heat and humidity. Those are kind of two issues that you generally see with lavender, especially here in the Chicagoland area where we have heavier soils. Um, but this one performed absolutely beautifully for us. And Shannon and I yesterday were like, we know we have a picture of this plant from the trial gardens, but we couldn't find it. So, um, but we know we've seen it with our own eyeballs. It did um, absolutely outstanding. So we knew we had to add it. A uh, really nice thing about this plant is it just reblooms all summer. All summer long, this thing's going to put up new blooms. So it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, compared to some of the other lavender that we do carry, I would say the foliage is a bit more coarse, um, thicker, and has a little bit more of that kind of whitish overlay um, on the plant. So, but really, really nice plant. It's about 18 to 24 inches tall and wide. Will flower for you guys in the summer and uh, pollinators also love it. So you'll wanna plant this one in full sun with some well-drained soils. It's not gonna take like standing water over the winter, but it should do well in uh, most kind of sunny garden conditions. So we have this one available now as well. All right, so next we have a couple grasses. This is Penicetum Lemon Squeeze, and this is from Proven Winners as well. And as Nikki mentioned, we first saw this one in the trial gardens up at Walters, and we're so impressed with, with the coloration on this one that, again, it's a chartreuse foliage plant in full sun, and it was not bleaching or burning. So that is the really nice thing about this one. It will keep that nice chartreuse color um, in the full sun. And so those are then complemented, you can see, by kind of the copper colored flower spikes. They're a nice height where they kind of stay in the foliage a little bit. They're not too tall and flopping way above it. Um, and uh, I should let Nikki say anything else she wants to on this one because she really, really loves this plant. But otherwise, this one is expected in April. Yeah, I do really love this plant. And I do not like chartreuse plants at all. <laughs> like usually I'm like, they look chlorotic. I don't, I have no need for them. But this one, it really did win us over both in the Walters gardens and then in our own trial gardens. We did trial this one. And it was like one that we like, uh, we're like, do we really want another penicetum? And it was just very different. So if you guys are looking for a chartreuse grass, like this is it, so. And someone asked a question about, does it reseed a lot? Um, I don't believe it is listed as sterile, so I'm not going to say that it doesn't recede, but at this point we have not seen issues with that in our child garden. So. No. All right, another penicetum, and this is another one that came from our trial gardens. We actually had um, I'm not exactly sure how many varieties of penicetum, but we had a bunch planted because we know there's always this ask for more grasses, but we always want to be intentional about what we're adding and make sure that it's truly different from something that, or, or better than something we have in our current product line. Um, and this one was another one that I think just blew us away just throughout the season. So Penicetum Love and Rockets is a Brent Horvath introduction from Intrinsic Perennials. And this one is definitely different than the other um, penicetum that we carry. So kind of like burgundy bunny, it has kind of a nice burgundy tinge at the tips throughout the season, but then in the fall gets this really nice deep burgundy color. And then the seed heads on this guy are this like really nice pretty purple. They get these 
big fluffy um, seed heads that are just, you know, completely outstanding. So this was another one just walking by the trial garden day after day, we were like, okay, we have to add this one. Um, size wise, it's about the same size as Hamlin if you guys are used to using that one. So 24 to 36 inches tall, but it's really nice now that we have a burgundy option in a little bit of a bigger size. Cause as we all know, burgundy bunny is a pretty tiny plant. So um, this one overwintered for us and has done really, really well. So I would highly recommend this one. Um, just a quick reminder on Penicetum, they are warm season grasses. So any Penicetum you get from us, they're not gonna do much. Um, um, until the temperatures really heat up. So uh, we should have this one here in April. All right, so next up we have three Symphiotrichum or more commonly known as asters uh, or aster oblongifolius. Uh, these are from the Chicagoland Grows program out of the Morton Arboretum and Botanic Garden. So these pictures that you're seeing here are from the beds at the Chicago Botanic garden uh, and kind of in the plant evaluation area. I strongly encourage you to go check these out in fall because they are awesome. Um, I was, I first saw these probably like four years ago now and was so impressed with them. Just uh, they're a really nice compact habit. Um, so we say 36 inches tall there. That's probably pushing it height-wise or maybe on a slightly more mature plant, I would say maybe more like 30 inches um, and then a little bit wider, but just a really nice mound and you can see uh, just full of flowers. The, the cotton candy on the bottom and the violet, it looks like those are probably a little bit past their prime of blooming, um, but generally these plants are just covered. And whereas with some of the other older varieties of aster, like October skies, they can open up a little bit. These form a really nice habit with not a lot of pinching or anything like that. Um, one thing about these where with the pinching, so I always tell people on some of the other asters, like let the rabbits do the first pinch for you because they just do it anyways. But these have kind of a stickiness to the stems that the rabbits and the deer seem to leave alone. So that's a really nice thing about these two. Um, I think these are gonna be a great landscape plant for fall used in massing. Um, obviously it's important in fall to have pollinate or you know nectar sources for pollinators so these fit the bill on these. And the other great thing about these is where on a lot of the asters you see powdery mildew as the season goes on. These we haven't seen much issues with that. So as a series I'm super excited about these and um, we have limited quantities but we do have some available now so I really encourage you to check them out. All right, next one is Veronica Purple Illusion. Um, and we did add this one just because there have been some supply chain issues with Purple Veronica here the last couple of years. And we know Purple Veronica is important to have. So we added Purple Illusion. It's a very nice plant, um, very similar to, you know, Wizard of Oz. Um, so could be subbed out for that one, but gets these really nice stalks of purple flowers. Uh, they are pretty salt tolerant and deer resistant and do attract humming, hummingbirds and butterflies. So a nice kind of pollinator plant. Um, with all Veronica, you're going to want to make sure that they're in well-drained soils. If they sit in too much moisture, they will kind of rot out. So just make sure they're in well-drained soils. And um, after blooming, again, if you've worked with Veronica for a while, the flowers don't age super nicely. Um, they do kind of get brown and that's again with all Veronica. So um, a little deadheading will make the plant look just nice and clean, but really good plant for full sun. If you're looking maybe for something a little bit different than salvia, uh, this one's Veronica Purple Illusion and it is a proven winner. All right, so, oh, sorry, yeah, two, so. Yeah, two polls. <laughs> so you guys are gonna vote on your favorite grass first, and then we're gonna ask you what your favorite perennial was, just because there was a lot in this particular category. Oh. 
Ooh, pretty split there. <laughs> I love them all too, and I'm not sure I could I could choose if you had asked me to. So yeah, each kind of fit a different fit a different situation. So they do. Here we go. We got a lot of perennials, so I'm excited to kind of see what people are interested in here. Ooh, all right. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, the boom chocolate is really impressive. Don't sleep on that fern though either. That fern, man, it is yeah. oh, incredible. So yes. All right. Uh, so thank you for that. So we are going to move on to shrubs next. Um, so the first shrub we have is Calicanthus Simply Sensational, and this is from Proven Winners as well. So if you're not familiar, uh, Calicanthus is not native here, but it is native kind of to the eastern United States. So Proven Winners shrubs in particular have been trying to do a lot of work um, with improvements on native cultivars. So this is one. Uh, they do have Calicanthus Aphrodite as well. We carry that one. So I would say as compared to Aphrodite, this is going to be maybe just kind of an improved version of that in a sense. So a heavier flower set, you can kind of see the flowers all the way up and down the stem on that picture on the upper right. Um, and then with Calicanthus in general, the flowers are fragrant, but sometimes you have to like really get into it and search for it, where with these, the fragrance is very strong. Um, so kind of a nice fruity fragrance. And I just love that flower. You know, for photographing, sometimes it isn't the best because it kind of recedes into the picture a little bit, but it's a super cool flower. So this would be a great plant for some kind of focal point. And as I said, as compared to Aphrodite, it's going to be a little more compact than that. So a um, little bit shorter, a little bit narrower. Um, so maybe a little bit more usable next to like a front entryway focal point or something like that. Um, this is going to want full part sun for the best blooming. And it is, um, in general, Calicanthus is very hardy here. So we shouldn't have any issues even for some of our customers farther up north. So um, we are expecting this one to be available in May of this year. All right, a new cornice, cornice arctic fire yellow. So we used to, maybe we still have a few around, but I'm not even sure. We used to carry arctic uh, fire, non-yellow. Uh, and we just found that one to be not the best performer, at least for us, um, and arctic fire yellow has been a bit of a stronger grower for us. So this one is going to get kind of full um, cornice size, so four to six feet tall and wide. So a bigger plant, probably um, further back in the backyard, uh, but does get really nice, beautiful white flowers that then turn into these really pretty white berries that you can see on the screen there. Uh, and then Winter interest. So this is a multi-season um, interest plant, which are always my favorite. They get those beautiful yellow stems. So it really stands out in the winter months when there's no foliage around. On this plant, the foliage or the uh, stem color is the best in year one and year two. So what we recommend is either you can go in and strategically prune out about a third of the stems if you want to keep that plant big, or if you're okay kind of cutting it back and letting it stay on the shorter side, um, you could do kind of a, a harder prune back um, yearly. But if you let the stems age, they will eventually turn to brown. So you do want to make sure you're continually pruning to keep that color really vibrant. Um, this plant is deer resistor deer resistant and salt tolerant as well, and good for shady locations. So, and it's pretty tolerant of most soil types. So um, just really nice plants, cornice, cornice arctic 
Sapphire Yellow. And we do have some available now. Yeah, and I don't think that picture also really does the color justice. It is a lot brighter. We used this one in the front entryway uh, redesign that we did this year. So just something to note on that. All right, next we have Hibiscus Dark Lavender Chiffon. This is also from Proven Winners. So if you were familiar with Hibiscus Lavender Chiffon, Chiffon this is just an upgrade on that. Um, so this was actually from a um, seedling of Lavender Chiffon they found uh, up at the Spring Meadow property. And it's just got a nice um, kind of darker purple flower and um, so kind of an improvement there. Otherwise, in terms of size, it's going to be similar to the original um, 8 to 12 feet tall and 6 to 8 feet wide. Again, this is not going to produce a whole lot of seed, but um, like some of the older hibiscus Syriaca varieties, um, but it is not to the point where they can say that it's sterile. So it shouldn't be seeding all over the place. But again, you might see one pop up here or there. Um, and we are expecting this one to be available in June. All right, Shannon, we have a couple of questions on the Cali campus. I think we could just answer really quickly. Uh, do the leaves turn yellow in clay or high pH? I'm not sure that we've trialed it in high pH, so I'm not sure we have firm answers on that. I have Cali campus Aphrodite planted in a pretty clay area, and I don't have any problems with it. So I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Simply Sensational, though. Oh, you're on mute, Shannon. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, I can't say, say for sure either. So I, we do have this one planted in the trial garden in our shrub display garden here. Um, but I wouldn't say that's a super heavy clay soil. So Yeah. And then deer resistant, do we know? Have we had any problems with deer? I We haven't. Um, again, we don't, we have deer here, but we typically don't see issues on a whole lot of stuff besides like Hasta. Uh, so I don't think this one has much of a deer problem though, as far as okay. I know, yeah. helicanthus in general. Okay. Um, the cornus, as far as getting uh, flowers, I'm not a hundred percent sure um, what the strategy is. I mean, the cornus Arctic fire is pretty hardy. It's hardy zone two to seven. That should go for the flower hardiness too. So. I'm not sure what you may want to do to get more flowers. I don't know. Yeah, I can't say I have a good answer on that one as well. Um, like I said, we've had um, these in our shrub display garden for, I mean, it'll be through two winters now as we come out of winter and then in the front display bed. So um, we can kind of watch that and see what yeah. we're seeing. Yeah, I don't, I just don't think it's probably the most prolific bloomer as it's, you know, bred more for the stem color. Yeah. Watch and we that. haven't, we haven't seen um, canker on this particular dogwood yet. No. So no. you see it a lot on the older varieties, but some of these newer varieties seem to be better. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing that on a lot of the newer stuff, it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue as it, as it is on the older. All right, who's ready for some hydrangeas? More hydrangeas, because we need more hydrangeas, guys, right? Maybe not, but there are more. So we're adding a, a few new ones, of course, um, and we're trying to be choosy about the ones that we do add um, to make sure we're, we're you know, continuing to add the best um, and maybe discontinuing some, which we'll go through as we move forward. But uh, the first new addition here is uh, Hydrangea Endless Summer Pop Star. So we are really excited about this one. It is a really nice plant. Uh, we forced some for our landscapes. If you're there, you probably saw it in our booth. And it was really easy to force, bloomed really nicely for us. Um, so, and we, Shannon and I did go up to um, Bailey Nursery up in Minnesota and we saw this one planted in their trial gardens. And they keep track of how many years it overwinters up there. And the plant, the kind of parent plant, looked really good. So, and it had been planted up there in the harsh um, Minnesota winters for a while. So really nice plant, really compact. This is not a replacement for Twist and Shout. This is a completely new hydrangea. They made sure to tell us that um, it is much more compact than Twist and Shout. 
Um, like any endless summer, they um, should bloom on both old and new wood. Um, my recommendation for pruning all endless summers is just wait until you start to see some bud break and then trim down um, to where to where your buds are, are breaking. So wait until it gets a little bit warmer. But this one's good for sun to part shade and a very reliable rebloomer. And flower set on this one is very heavy, one of the kind of, I would say, heaviest um, endless summers. So that's a hydrangea endless summer pop star. And we will have this one available for bud and bloom this year. Um, we have quite a few available still if you guys are interested in booking some. Um, otherwise, we'll have it in our regular product line come May. All right, next we have Hydrangea Paniculata Berry White. So this is out of the first editions program. And from that program, most of you are probably familiar with uh, Hydrangea Vanilla Strawberry. That's been a staple for, what, the last 10 to 15 years, something like that. Um, but the one issue with that plant, it's got show-stopping color, but it tends to flop when the flowers get big. Um, so this is an improvement on that variety. It has much stronger stems. It's a little bit more compact overall. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's the same height, but it's a little bit narrower too. So just not quite as big of a plant, um, more upright stems to keep those flowers up. So um, it will also have a little bit deeper color um, when it gets to its final kind of dark pink red. Um, one thing, and this is going to apply to all paniculatas in general, but it, it's kind of the cooler the climate is, the better that that fall coloring progression will be. And the more gradual we get to the fall temp through fall temperatures, especially the night temperatures, that will lead to a better color progression too. I know there are some years where it's such a bummer and it's like, you know, you start to get to that nice pink and then it's like, why did everything just go brown? And it's kind of when, when our color, when our nighttime changes are just a little bit too quick. So um, that's going to get the best flowering. But again, as as Nikki said, um, this one is, you know, first editions, which is out of Bailey. So they've tested it all the way up to Minnesota. It's a very hardy plant to zone three. Um, so this should be a nice improvement over vanilla strawberry. And again, we'll kind of be slowly phasing out vanilla strawberry. So um, this one is available now. All right, another hydrangea paniculata. Um, this one is pufferfish. So this one is a little bit um, more compact here, three to four feet tall and wide. Um, pretty similar to bobo, but uh, the flowers on this one are a little bit bigger than bobo and a little bit it says they're more puffed out. Um, so the flowers just kind of look a bit poofier than some of the other panicle uh, hydrangeas that are very tight in their flower. Uh, you're not going to get any pink aging on this one. It is going to be white flower and aged to green. Um, and then it's kind of really interesting. I don't know, little thing that it does is once the flower turns green, it like puts out a little more white poof at the tip. So um, just kind of really kind of strange and interesting uh, hydrangea paniculata. So this one does have a more compact habit, but very strong stems, very good shape, um, kind of like bobo and very hardy, hardy zone three to eight. So, um, and as a reminder with paniculatas, um, you know, you're gonna wanna do your pruning late winter to early spring. Um, you know, just cut back about a fourth or a third of the plant to help promote good branching. And it also does help promote more flowering. So um, we should have this one available come May. All right, uh, another hydrangea paniculata. So this is Tiny Quickfire from Proven Winners. So this is the fourth in the Quickfire series, and this will be the absolute smallest of all. I shouldn't say absolute. They're always coming out with things, but I don't know how you would make a hydrangea paniculata much smaller than this one. Um, this is only going to be about 24 inches tall or so, um, so even smaller than Little Quickfire. So very compact front of the border plant. As you can see, it's loaded with blooms. Um, you know, it looks like pretty much every stem there has a flower on it. Um, 
So nice color impact. And then while, in, you know, the quick fires in general are going to be the earliest to bloom, this seems like it's potentially even the earliest in that series so that you're going to see um, budding and flowers even as early as May on this plant. So really, really pushing the, uh, the window of the paniculata flowering there. But if you're looking for an early one and especially a small one, um, this is a great paniculata to check out. So we are expecting to have these in May. Okay, this is kind of an exciting ad. I think we, we have been asked over the years for upright junipers and we had not carried any. Um, so finally, we decided it was time to add one to our line. Uh, this one's Juniper, Juniperus um, chinensis Fairview. And uh, the really nice thing about this one is really it's super heavy berry set. So it, again, if you guys visited us at iLandscape, we have these at the back of our booth. And they were just loaded with the blue silver berries. So um, very nice kind of tight plant good for a hedge um, and gets that nice kind of bright green to bluish green uh, foliage. Um, the other nice thing about this juniper is it is pretty resistant to uh, cedar apple rust and uh, it is slow, slower growing. So um, I, I did check the plants that we have available right now are about, you know, three and a half to maybe about four feet tall. Um, and it will get 12 to 15 inches tall kind of full size, but it does take a while for the plant to get there. So like most evergreens, um, pretty slow to grow. This one is not salt, salt tolerant, so you will wanna plant it somewhere where it's not gonna get salt spray and it does prefer well-drained soil. So just keep that in mind. Um, but again, nice plant if you're looking for something different um, from a thuya. And I know there is some, or at least last year, there was some shortage on the market with upright thuyas. So something else you guys can try. Um, and again, we have them available now, about three and a half to four feet tall. And someone asked um, what size the Fairview will come in, and those will be in on number five. Um, okay, next we have a couple of roses, um, again, from the Proven Winners Program. So I know we have a lot of Proven Winners here, and we really did for a long time kind of hold off on adding any of their roses to our product line. We felt like we just had so many roses, we carried so many roses already. We felt like we, you know, liked a lot of the roses or the vast majority of the roses that we carried. Um, but after seeing these, after trialing some of these in our trial garden and seeing the performance, we felt that they were, um, Kind of a worthy addition to the program. So this is the Oso oh Easy Urban Legend. And you can see it has really nice kind of a, a true red flower color to it. So kind of like um, they used to have home run on the market back on the day. So kind of a nice cherry red color, you know, an actual red, um, not the pinky red like knockout. So these have done very well for us in the trial garden. Uh, they rebloom very nicely. Um, don't really need to deadhead them. We haven't seen any issues with disease, um, any issues with Japanese beetle uh, around in our trial garden. So um, they've been a really nice performer. So if you're looking for kind of that that brighter red shrub rose, um, this would be one to check out. And we have these available now. All right, Rosa Ringo All Star is another proven winner. So. Um, we did trial a lot of the PW roses to see what would be the best ones to add. And this one was pretty eye-catching for us. So it is a single, um, but the, the flower kind of color was, was very eye-catching. And again, we have this one at Eye Landscape in the back of the booth, and it was in bloom. Um, so it kind of gets these two-toned colored flowers. Um, they really start with that kind of orangey melon with a really bright um, 
hot pinky cherry center and then the flowers do age to that lavender and pink so just really pretty flower color um, really nice disease resistance it's self-cleaning so you don't need to deadhead it um, it is pretty resistant to powdery mildew and black spot now with any rose that is only with proper siting so if you put it in shade somewhere it's going to get a lot of moisture it's going to have disease problems um, so make sure you guys are planting these roses in full sun um, not, you know, overcrowded with other plants so it has good airflow and uh, in well-drained soils and you shouldn't have many disease problems at all. So this one is uh, Rosa Ringo All-Star. We have it available now. All right, so last plant, uh, thank you for sticking with us as I know we are kind of at the end of our time, but um, this is Wygelia Very Fine Wine. So again, this is just an improvement over fine wine. And I know sometimes that can be frustrating when you've, you know, spec jobs and things like that. Like, oh, I just want the plant that I spec. But I do have to say Proven Winners does do a good job of, you know, if they're bringing in something to replace something, it is because it is definitely an improvement. So this one has darker, you know, kind of more not stable color, dark foliage, but just a nice deeper, darker foliage color. You can see from that picture, much more floriferous blooming. Um, the, the size is just slightly more compact than very fine wine. So it's not like it's a super big change there, but um, in general, just, uh, just an improvement over the old variety. Um, as, as with most Wigilla, you know, you're going to get the best coloring and flowering in full sun. So like Nikki said on the rose, sighting is important. Um, but this one um, also is available now. All right. So we want to know uh, which shrub you guys were most excited about. So please uh, pop your answers in there. And then make sure to stick around for the next slide because um, we do want to give you a little heads up in the plants that we are dropping uh, for 2023. And I think if you guys are specking plants or designing, that's really important for you guys to know. And we did get some uh, comments about wanting more compact um, you know, maybe more foliage shrub uh, varieties. So if you guys ever have ideas or things that you see on the market that we're not carrying, um, make sure to provide us with that information because we want to get that in our trials and both in production and in the landscape to start making decisions. So we always want your feedback and if there's something we don't carry, let us know. Cool, Cali Campus. Cali Campus is a really mm -hmm. awesome plant. It is a very cool plant. So and and as I said, it, it it's nice that there's kind of work being done to improve some of the native varieties that's too and make them a little more usable in some landscapes. So yes, yes, agree. All right. So when we're adding plants, we have to also um, say farewell to some plants. And this past year, we made some really tough decisions that we were going to slim down some plant varieties even some popular ones that you guys are used to. And some of this may be a little shocking to you guys, but um, really we wanna make sure that we're growing the best plants for landscape applications. And in some cases, um, we're just seeing more disease on these plants. Um, we're seeing more dieback in the landscape. So we're making a decision to drop. So um, you'll see a sampling here. We're actually phasing, we call it phasing here. Um, we're phasing um, almost a hundred plants in 2023. So we will have some stock left as we move through the year, but um, we will be you know, phasing those out once we're done and move through the inventory. Um, you can contact your sales representative or um, email MG, MG sales for that full list. We do have the full list with suggested subs for you guys. So you can start making those changes. Um, and we will also be um, coming out with maybe a newsletter or something to prepare you guys for that as well. 
But if you're looking at this list, like the Berberis atropurpurea nana, um, we really want to be responsible and start moving people towards more sterile varieties. So you guys could try out Sunjoy Toto. Um, we're also trialing other sterile varieties too. But um, And then with Spirea, we're just seeing a lot of disease issues on the old varieties. Um, and quite frankly, the proven winner double um, double play series is better. So um, we're making the decision to drop the older varieties. On perennials, Coreopsis moonbeam, I think if you've been in the landscape industry long enough, you guys just know that that's not a good plant. We know it's not a good plant. We don't feel good selling it anymore. So um, maybe move towards Zagreb. We're gonna continue to try new genetics to see what might be better out there. And then just a couple more examples of, um, you know, a couple lines that we have a lot of different varieties um, that are pretty similar. So we're not going to carry jo a geranium Johnson's blue anymore because we have Roseanne and they're very, very similar. And then um, some of the hostas we're trying to call out as well, just because we carry a lot of different varieties. So, um, so again, Contact uh, MG Sales or your sales rep for that full list. And uh, Shannon worked on uh, substitutes for you guys. So we would love to share that information with you. I don't know, Shannon, do you want to say anything else about that? No, yeah, I think you kind of covered it. I know somebody had a question about, you know, what what varieties we like of Spirea. I, I popped a couple into the Q&A there. But again, we do have a list with suggested substitutions. <laughs> a caveat on that, we don't always know what people are looking for, what the most important attribute is. So maybe some seem a little creative, but it's, you know, are you looking for this flower color, this size and things like that. So, um, but yes, I think like Nikki said, we are trying to grow the best plants for you guys. And if there are ones that are giving us trouble, we'd rather get rid of those and focus on plants that we can grow really nicely for you. So. Yeah, and the email address um, is mgsales at midwestgroundcovers.com. You can, uh, that takes you into the general sales queue so we can get you the list of plants that we're um, phasing out, so. All right, and I will throw a little plug in here too. Um, if you guys want to trial like, you know, one of our new plants, um, we do like to sample plants through the season. So, you know, again, we give you like one of the new plants to trial in your own garden. So again, if you're calling in um, to place an order, we can throw one of those on an existing order. Uh, with that being said, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, as Jamie mentioned earlier, we have a few more webinars coming up. So please make sure to go on our website and sign up for those. Uh, we have one on soils with Kevin Donnelly from Midwest Trading and one on plants for clay soils, which has been a hot topic. So make sure to join uh, Shannon and I for that. Otherwise, make sure you're following us on Instagram, um, both Midwest Ground Covers and Natural Garden Natives, and check out our YouTube page for more educational videos or past uh, presentations that we've done like this. Otherwise, we hope you have an excellent rest of your Friday and a great weekend. Thanks.